More than 800,000 people in the UK are thought to have a condition which makes them pull out their own hair. It's known as trichot trichotillomania and it is a compulsive anxiety disorder. People who suffer from it say pulling out their hair gives them a fleeting but intense sense of release, but it can leave you almost completely bald. Reality star Sam Fires and US actress Olivia Munn are among those who say they have pulled out their hair and even their eyelashes. But some sufferers and hair loss clinics say the condition is not being taken seriously enough by the NHS. Well, Lucinda Ellery is a hair loss consultant with concerns about how the condition is being treated. Charlotte Suggett started pulling out her hair when she was 10 and Naomi DaCosta runs Trichot... Trichotol I'm terrible at saying this word. <laughs> it's not... Trichotillomania, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> TTM for short. That's good. We'll call it TTM, thank you. It's a group which provides therapy for sufferers. I mean, it, it's obviously... It is not a laughing matter. It's just not a word that we're familiar with because it's not mm. something people really know much about. So very, tell us more very, about it, yeah. Lucinda. Well, um... It's, the definition is an irresistible urge to pull out your hair it, to gain a sense of calm, if you like, and sometimes in a meditative state. So uh, according to um, Professor John Grant, there are 100 million people worldwide who actually have to manage this situation. So uh, an education is very important because girls back in the day, because I've been doing it for such a long time, would go to a doctor who have never heard of it, never mind be able to say it or spell it. Yeah. So really... And presumably you know, thought they were the only person oh doing it. Oh my goodness, because how many you times have you heard that? Yeah. I'm the only person that has this. So it's, it's really good now with the internet and the help out there to, to support people, but there was nothing like that in the years gone by, has there, for a long, long time. Charlie, um, you started pulling your hair out when you were 10. Um, did Were you kind of doing it consciously what do you remember when you started and why yeah whenever I've been asked this question I've never been able to pinpoint exactly when yeah. I think because a lot of it was just denial I wasn't really aware of it and when I was that age I think because I, I lost my dad to cancer so I think that triggered it and it's just overwhelming a lot of other things to deal with I noticed little bits but I just I think just chose just not to pay attention to it not to deal with it you end up with bald patches how how how, what, how many bald patches were you <laughs> sort of it varies unfortunately I think when I was younger I used to have a couple usually around the crown um, around the front the middle and the back they used to be separate but then when I first moved to London about six years ago um, I think oh you know I was going through a breakup new city mm. new worries new things to deal with and those different uh, patches merged into one pretty much so that's when I came across this and that's a, that's a picture of you there Charlie you yeah <laughs> so explain so explain you've got a hair weave now to, to cover um, up not so much patches. a weave it's um, a system in place that kind of it you know helps sort of form a barricade almost be, be like between the patches helps gives the chance hair chance a chance to grow which it hasn't had for a long time so you, I'd get violent you just you're ripping your hair out when you're especially stressed um, so it's just a system like a mesh and it just you know I remember the first time I had it on I called my mum in tears and said I've got a centre part in for the first time and like seven, eight years, because I'd always had a side part in. Like oh, a little obviously comb over. That <laughs> yeah, comb yeah. over. Glorified comb over. <laughs> Master of disguise after a while. You learn ways to hide it, back combing, colouring it in. I, some people choose never to read really tell anyone. I think my way of dealing with it is to kind of almost volunteer the information to them, almost to beat them to the punch and be like, oh, I've, you, I've noticed you look at my hair, I've got this. Um, it's just, oh yeah, I'd rather be open with it, about it from the beginning. Part of the healing is getting rid of the sort of shame, yeah. humiliation, embarrassment that you carry around with you for decades. Yeah. Very damaging to your psyche. And especially if you have what you consider a secret or you don't want to be discovered, it's just not a very good frequency to walk around with. So, so much, much better to be, you know, if you can be like Charlie, where you can sort of chat to your friends. It's so good for the girls to be able to do that, share. It's very, very important. And it really does help towards you coping with it because there is no known cure at all anywhere that we know of as yet, according to the um, you know. When you say no known cure, I mean it's is it in the same as would alcoholism? Would there be therapy? Oh yes, but there's no cure. There's no pills, potions, lotions. So you'll be dealing with it for life. You have to manage yes. it. You right. have to manage it and uh, and live a, a no, try and live a normal life under extreme circumstances. L Lucinda. 
I know that you're concerned that the NHS is not taking this seriously I, I enough. I am very concerned. What, what, what are you basing that on? What's the well, evidence that I you're mean, getting for that? The, the fact that if you try and get NHS help, it's very, very difficult. Girls actually give up, you know, which is very sad because it is a clinical condition and it is worldwide recognised as, as such. But are people going trying to get help and, and sort of um, being turned away by the GP you know, because lucky. they don't understand you, or what, you, what's going you, on? You probably get CBT if you're lucky and cognitive uh, behavioral therapy yeah cognitive and, behavioral yeah. therapy and you know the approach is definitely through the you know emotional self psychological self you know because it's full of remissions and relapses mm -hmm. so the idea is that you know you're as you say you're 13 years in remission which is wonderful that's going to mean a lot to a lot of people mm -hmm. that she can actually say i'm pull free for 13 years I it's a, a massive uh, a massive coup to do something like that but there isn't enough uh, out there this not education to the medical profession there isn't very much help CBT is much of, as much as you can get if you're lucky and if you've had something for 10 or 15 years and you get six or eight sessions yeah. with somebody who perhaps is going to be different each time you go you often the girls complain that they seem to be the ones educating mm. the and medical profession the case, about yeah. TTM so it's really education is what we need and what about help have you had help from the NHS um, well, I did try, because um, the NHS, well, I, impli I applied to try and get some funding um, for this through Lucinda and through the NHS, but the paperwork alone was quite stressful. I am coming to the end of some CV, like, quantitative behavioural therapy sessions at the moment mm -hmm. through the NHS, which was brilliant. Like, obviously, because I got up to 12 sessions, and it's great, but although it takes, takes you a while to get, to get comfortable with the person, start to really open up to them, and obviously then it comes to an end, and then... You have to kind of want me to start again with someone else. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. <laughs>